got an update to do on the ATS this morning. So the first thing to do is I'm just taking it out for a spin to warm the gearbox up because you can still see that there's all frost on the bonnet. It's all frosty on the side of the road. It was about minus two when I got in here looking at this. It's now one degrees. So I'm just going up and down this farm track a couple of times just to uh, warm everything up, get it up to uh, calibration spec. And um, yeah, it's just a mandatory software update we've got to do. Hopefully saw any glitches out. I, don't, I haven't really noticed them, but the, the software updates come from the factory. So we'll go and show you, plug the laptop into here and probably take about a half hour just to update it. Just anything that wants calibrating, just keep it all running smoothly. Give it a bit of a, a bit of a boot. Get it up to 50k for a couple of minutes and it should be uh, pretty much there. So just pulled the engine oil up, just double check it. Yeah, that's it. Oil filter, diesel, diesel, diesel filter. This is the air filter. Take this off like this. The air intake's on the back of this. Just round there and it all comes in here so it doesn't suck all the dust up from the front of the tractor, which is good. You just pull that out, like that, and that's the honeycomb air filter. So that's pretty clean to be fair. So she can go back in. To get into the side as well here, it's really easy because these, obviously these mud flaps here, get hold of them like that, and they pull around to give you the access. Let go of them, there go my gloves. And then these side panels just clip on and off. So when you want to put that back on, just put it up there clip on it goes and then obviously pull the bonnet back down to uh, shut it so I've done the air just have a check of that diesel should be okay because it was done about 100 hours ago just topped the oil up it only wanted a little top up water's okay I can see that up there there's a you getting the radiator clean it out and it is clean which is good um, Here's the add blue filter for that is located underneath underneath the diesel tank up under there if you want to know where that is a washer fluid front and back window wipers and here is the cab air filter in there so undo that wing nut undo that wing nut and then that comes out of there and there's two more each side in the cab one there one there, but they very rarely need cleaning. The camera sometimes needs cleaning. Obviously the rear view camera up there, that will want cleaning every now and again. This is the back end all for the uh, for the gearbox. So that's where you fill it up through there. And the dipstick for it is just there, look. We've got, uh, this one here, T, means tank which obviously free, free fly return back to the tank, hydraulic braking, power beyond, load sensing. These are obviously all the sport, small valve bits connectors. And you push that one that way to push the top out, pull that one out that way and it pulls the pipes out for you. ABS braking, which is sort of like the low loader and the dump trailers. Dual control power just there, air brakes, yellow line red line ice bus in there and then that one there is the rear lighting greasing points we've got all greasing points on obviously all the lift arms got some in there you want to make sure they're clean as well these don't want to be full of grease or else they sort of block up and then these rods can't go back inside they're very easy uh more greasing points on obviously all the lift arms and everything more grease nipples on the check chains this filter here is a wabco filter 
desiccant filter, I think it's called, for the air brakes. So this obviously sucks the moisture out. So that very rarely needs changing. This panel here on the other side of the door, that's like a little bit of water coming out there. That's a little trickle charger, just keeping the battery charged whilst the main dealer does the calibration with the laptop. Obviously I've got some uh, details here. Gives you all the fuses. These are all the fuse diagrams. This here is the hydraulic filter, hydraulic oil for the uh, tipping rams on trailers and stuff because it has a separate system to the back end door now which is really good so it doesn't get contaminated so this all here is fuses and relays um the next set of fuses are just there look that's obviously the laptop plugged in calibrating fuses there next load of fuses is up there beyond that panel there and then there's another fuse beyond the seat for the seat which not many people know about so yeah few locations one behind the seat one up there in the roof one down here just here with all fuses and relays and then more fuses and relays in there so there's four locations on the tractor where there are fuses next thing under here we have got we've got two filters under there and obviously the drain plugs as well beyond this panel here so there's two internal inside the gearbox and there's one external which is behind this panel here so if you take that off you get to the main main obviously filter and then two underneath front hub oil bottom position to drain and then when you've drained it to fill it back up move it back to here fill back up to all level which obviously that'll be around there another one another one there for obviously the differential more grease nipples here for the front linkage and on the top link so they'll want greasing as well same for the other side for the hub both sides so service intervals for this are 50 hours and then 600 hours and then 1200 hours so every 600 hours after that so this tractor has actually already been done so i'm actually just going around just pointing out a few bits where it all is right so the main deal is now finished doing it wasn't a calibration what they're doing it was a uh, gearbox software update so they've done all that and then what you have to do after that you have to to save it from sort of here to the main computers you have to turn the ignition on for three minutes leave it turn it off for three minutes and then do that three times and then it should save all the information out of the laptop into the main computers underneath and then obviously we have to do the calibrations, which I can do through here on this computer. So any software updates all has to be done by the main dealer or, you know, any issues like anything to do with software or updates that all has to be done through main dealer's laptop. Whereas the calibrations, you can do them yourself. So main screen here. And then first thing we can do, we've got diagnosis. And we've got here, we've got the battery level. We've got engine temperature hydraulic temperature this is the um the gearbox temperature um this here it's not actually a temperature this is the percentage of how much hydraulic so this is hydraulic oil in the hydraulic tank so the hydraulic tank's 85 percent full that never, that really when you fill that up it wants to be 90 percent full you never want to go to 100 because if you do say if you plug something in and it overfills it it all spews oil out the back so you usually fill that up to about 90 percent and this one here is obviously the bar of the air brakes, so 8.2 bar in the air brakes. And to get into the cat to get into this calibration screen, you've got these two buttons. Hold them both together for five seconds, like that. And then in a second, you'll see the screen come up. So this is the software; it's all running and everything. But we don't need any of that. So I'm going to go out of here, and you want to to do to get into the calibrations, the other calibration screen go into just this normal screen here like this hold for five seconds again like this and here's all the calibrations that we can do so these are all lit all these here at the moment these are all lit green if one of these is lit in red it means it needs calibrating and the way you calibrate it i mean you, you i can calibrate it again even though it's green but i'll just show you how to do it so the clutch pedal so it doesn't need to be running, but you have the ignition on. 
and then what we do to to go into the clutch pedal I'll press OK and then it will come up with this this here so the foot number one and number two so what I want to do number one is uh, sorry not clutch, not clutch pedal so number one is down press OK now number two we slowly want to let it off like that up off OK again so that's the clutch pedal calibrated throttle pedal it's got three positions this time so you want to push this down till it goes tight so that's the first position and then the next position is fully on okay third position fully off like that okay and then after all these, all of these calibrations, it, I know I didn't do it on the last one, but after each calibration, you want to turn the tractor off for 20 seconds, like we did earlier, only 20 seconds this time. So it saves it from there into the main computer. So yeah, so I'll give it 20 seconds and then we'll turn the key back on and go through the rest of the calibrations. Keys back on. These are the other calibrations we've got. So basically the same through all these steering if you do the steering what you have to do you have to turn the steering left and right and to the middle so same as pretty much the clutch and the throttle but when you do the steering you always want to turn the steering to the left to begin with so left middle right steering valve it's the same front hitch rear hitch radar now these two bits here t1 range gears and t2 gearbox clutch if I click on it, it's going to give me an error code because the gearbox isn't hot enough. Because it's been sat here for about half an hour now, it'll be uh, it'll be too cold. So yeah, look, you'll get error code E two two five, and that is because the gearbox is not above thirty five degrees in here. So look, it's only twenty seven degrees. So what you have to do, you'll have to drive round until this goes over thirty five degrees, and then go back into the go back into the settings, and then. You just press that. Obviously, the tractor has to be running for the gearbox. And then it will put the handbrake on as well, make sure it's stationary. And then it will rev itself up and it will change gears automatically without going anywhere. And it will do everything for you. And that probably takes... The T2 one takes about 10 minutes. The other one takes probably only like 30 seconds or something like that. Anyway, I hope that's been sort of fairly interesting. I know I've missed a few bits. There is a lot more calibrations you can do, but obviously... Got to go into a lot more detail, just sort of showing you the minor sort of things and the minor sort of servicing things that you can do. Um, I know it's been a bit of a boring video. I've been going on and on and on, but obviously, you know, there's quite a lot of information there that somebody might need, might need to use. So, yeah, I'll see you in the next video and uh, don't forget, subscribe.